私はシンガポールにもう10年以上住んでるんですけれどもローカルの弁護士さんというのを相談するのは非常に不安だなと。The team has committed to understanding and adjusting to these cultures as so, Winchon, あの私はシンガポールで生活する中で周りの日本人からあのシンガポールにおいて法律問題に巻き込まれた時にどこに相談に行ったらわからないという話をよく聞くんですけれども今日はそれについてお話しさせてもらってもいいですか So I would like to discuss this topic today ロブンチョン私はシンガポールにもう10年以上住んでるんですけれどもその中でたくさんの日本人にお会いしてで彼らがまあ日々たくさんの法律の問題に直面しているというのを耳にするんですね。例えば、まあ、雇用問題だったり、離婚の問題だったり、あとは刑事事件の被害者、加害者になってしまった、ハラスメントの被害に遭った、まあ、その他たくさんの法律問題があると思うんですけども、その中で、まあ、言葉もわからない、わ、まあ、からないとか、英語で相談するというのが非常にハードルが高い、でシンガポールの法律もほとんど知らない、で文化的な違いでちょっとローカルの。弁護士さんとどうやって最初のコンタクトを取ったらいいのかなっていうのがわからないというような方が結構な数いらっしゃると思うんですけれども今日はちょっとそれの問題についてお話しさせていただければと思います。So the, shall we go to the first topic? とまずあの言葉の問題というのが最初の問題として挙げられるんですけれども、ね、日本人にとってその母国語ではない言葉であの法律のの相談をしななきゃいけないといいけとうのは非常にハードルが高いんですねで英語が分かる方にとっても法律の複雑な用語だったり手続きっていうのを英語でディスカッションしなきゃいけないっていうのは非常にハードルが高いことになるのでローカルの弁護士さんというのを相談するのは非常に不安だなと思われる方たくさんいらっしゃるんですけれどもちょっとそれについて一個意見を伺えればと思います。So, have you ever felt any issue or difficulty to communicate with Japanese clients so far? Yeah, I think it's a very important question, Tomoka. You know, in the many years that we have served the Japanese community in Singapore,、mm-hmm. we have developed a service delivery process that facilitates seamless communication between our Japanese clients and ourselves.、Mm-hmm. And just to explain a bit about this service delivery process, it would usually involve having a Japanese lawyer physically present during our first consult. This is so that our Japanese client can give instructions in Japanese. And then all the instructions given in Japanese will be translated from Japanese to English.、Mm. Right? And then, in the course of us giving our advice, the Japanese lawyer that's present will then translate all our English advice into Japanese.、Mm. And through this two way translation, we feel that you know, our clients have feedback that nothing really beats the comfort of being able to give instructions in your native language and take advice in your na- native language,、mm-hmm. you know, regardless of the level of proficiency that particular client has,、mm-hmm. in respect of both the English language and the Japanese language. Yeah. Okay, so do you adjust your style or way of speaking in English when you speak to a Japanese client compared to when you speak to local clients? Yes, to, so to answer your question on whether we adapt our communication style specifically for Japanese clients, you know, from dealing with many Japanese clients over the years, we understand that there's a whole spectrum of proficiency in English, and no two Japanese clients are actually the same. Right? And to build on that, even though they may have different levels of proficiency in English, These Japanese people, they are all lay people. They are usually not legally trained.、Mm-hmm. And the way that we deal with all lay people is that we always use a, a, a plain and simple、mm-hmm. like, level of English to enable them to fully understand our advice so that they can trust and understand that the solution that we are providing will lead to the outcomes that we are trying to explain to them.、Mm-hmm. 次に、まあ、文化の違いという問題について話していきたいと思うんですけれどもあの英語が分かるという方でもそのやっぱりシンガポール人との文化的な違いというところからローカルの弁護士さんとコミュニケーションを取るのが少し難しいという意見も耳にするんですね。でまあ文化的なそのコミュニケーションの違いからやっぱり全体的にあの案件だったり相談の内容自体を理解するのがに影響を与えてくるというお話をよく耳にするんですけども。So, Bun Chun, have you felt any、uh, cultural difference between you and Japanese clients?、Uh, and if so, are you already able to adjust yourself understanding of the Japanese culture when you are communicating with Japanese people? 
as Tomoka in serving the Japanese community. I think Vanilla Law as a team has you know, garnered a very deep and meaningful respect and understanding for the Japanese culture. In particular, you know, the Japanese, the uniqueness of Japanese culture and its difference from Singaporean culture has been very pronounced over our interactions with our clients. Mm. And the team has committed to understanding and adjusting to these cultural sensitivities because we find that you know, in delivering our services, we can achieve the best possible outcomes and that these best possible outcomes for our Japanese clients many a time tend to be the most culturally sensitive one. Mm-hmm. では最後に弁,弁護士費用についてということなんですけれども、まあ、これは日本人だけではなくてどの国の方でも弁護士費用というのは牽引されることだと思うんですけれども、まあ、弁護士費用があまりにも高すぎるとやっぱり相談に行くのもちょっと躊躇してしまうということが皆さんあると思うんですが、そのブンチャン、could you tell the audience whether you have any、uh, way to mitigate legal fee so that they can afford it? Yeah, I think Tomoka, in the 30 years that Vanilla Law has served the small and medium enterprises in Singapore, I think you are completely right to say that legal cost is front and center of all clients' minds. And in respect of the Japanese community and our SME community at large, we, there are two main ways that we deal with this issue of managing legal cost. And I would say that the main underlying theme、um, behind this methodology is that of transparency. So, to explain the two different ways that we manage legal costs, the first is that of transparency in our solutions. So, it goes back to the name of the brand, Vanilla Law. You know, as, we, as you would know, vanilla in the world of ice cream flavors is the plain and simple flavor. Right? It's, the, it's the flavor that everyone defaults to for the base of ice cream flavors. And aligning ourselves with that ethos, what we do is that Vanilla Law as a team, We give legal advice in a way that is plain and simple as well, in hopes that our clients can trust and understand the process and how we envision the recommended solution and how that will lead to the best possible solutions. Yeah, so it's to some degree a high degree of client centricity that we really believe in, in delivering our services in the tra- most transparent way possible. Okay, and this brings me on to the second way that we manage legal costs, which is that of transparency in our fees. And Vanilla Law as a brand pivoted quite unconventionally from an hourly rate model、mm-hmm. to a fixed fee model、mm-hmm. in hopes that our clients can mitigate this you know, misconception that when you engage a lawyer,、mm-hmm. you are giving them a blank check to write whatever they want、mm-hmm. right, on legal fees.、Mm-hmm. And the last thing our clients really want, or any Japanese client really wants, is in the cost of having their legal problems being solved. All the stress, all the worry, all the anxiety they are facing throughout the legal process, they also have to worry about being ambushed by extremely high legal fees.、Mm-hmm. So, what, how we promote this transparency in our fees is that we tag all our fees to the objective that our client is trying to reach so that you know, as lawyers, we don't get rewarded for being inefficient in our work、mm-hmm. or billing our client hours that you know, don't justify being in our bills. Yeah, I think broadly that's how we alleviate our clients. Anxiety and worry in respect of these high legal fees and how that may add to the problem rather than resolve it. Yeah, that's how I would say we resolve this issue of high legal fees. Okay.